Hi, this is Dr. Justin Essery, and this is PolySci 506 uh, Bayesian Computational Nonparametric Statistics. And uh, this is a bonus lecture on how to use uh, JAGS as your GIB sampler instead of WinBugs or OpenBugs. You, could, uh, you may remember from my last lecture we talked about using various pieces of software such as WinBugs, OpenBugs, or MCMC Pack. Um, that's my, uh, to, as your GIB sampler when you're uh, estimating some kind of model with Bayesian methods. Uh, however, uh, WinBugs and OpenBugs are not available on uh, Macintosh systems, at least not without a good deal of extra work, such as installing an emulator or maybe even installing Windows on your PC. So I decided to create this little tutorial um, using the examples from last week's lecture, showing you how to use JAGS if you'd like to use JAGS. Uh, it turns out that, uh, at least in R, uh, the use of JAGS and, um, is relatively interchangeable with the use of WinBugs or OpenBugs. Um, the the uh, bug script files that you write for WinBugs or OpenBugs can be used pretty much in most cases without any kind of modification in JAGS. There are some syntactic differences, but at least for the kind of models that we're running, it'll be uh, roughly equivalent, or basically completely equivalent to run these models in JAGS instead. So uh, what you want to do is uh, just Google Jags and you'll get Jersey Girls Area Soccer and the Jacksonville Jaguars and Junior Amateur Golf Scholars. But you'll also get uh, Just Another Gib Sampler, the SourceForge page here. Uh, just Another Gib Sampler is again, Just Another Gib Sampler. Uh, you want to download it and install it on your system um, using uh, the various uh, links here. The Windows page where I got mine, um, actually it looks like there are binary packages for OSX2, is here at the SourceForge page. And this JAGS 3.2.0 EXE at the top is uh, the link for the Windows version. So if you have the Windows version, or if you have a Windows PC, you can just download that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to want to go into JAGS 3.x, uh, go into Mac OS X here, and the latest version should be uh, right here, the JAGS 3.1.0. Uh, DMG file. Um, uh, uh, right there, here we go. Dags 3.1.0.dmg. Um, that looks like it's slightly behind the very latest version of the Windows uh, port 3.2.0, but I'm sure, I'm sure that it'll be close enough. So uh, for the Windows PC, uh, you just download the CXE file, double click it, it more or less installs itself, and you're ready to rock and roll. So uh, moving on to R here. Um, what I'm going to do is do two examples, um, one with a regression data set, just like last time, and one with a random effects data set, again, just like last time. Uh, and then I'm going to do, do both of those using a standard uh, JAGS type model. Uh, then I'm going to do a third example where we uh, look uh, at par a parallelized version um, of, of running in, in uh, running a, a Gibbs sampler. One nice thing about JAGS is that it actually allows you to run multiple chains at the same time um, on a PC that has more than one uh, central processing unit, more than one core. Um, so for example, this computer I'm recording the lecture on has 12 cores, so in principle I can run 12 Markov chains at the same time and get uh, many, many more updates in my, in my uh, of, of many more samples from my target distribution in a much shorter time. And that's going to become really important when you run a very complicated model and want a good number of samples in a reasonable time. It's nice to be able to use the full power of your PC, and, and JAGS allows you to do that. So uh, we'll start with the simple examples and then move on to that parallelized example. All right, so I've cleared everything from my uh, R memory. I'm just going to load in the same regression data set that we used in lecture four. Uh, this is a very simple uh, YX linear relationship um, where the relationship between y and x is 3 plus 2x plus a randomly, uh, a randomly distributed error term that's distributed according to the normal with mean 0 and standard deviation of 2. If I do a plot of y against x, you can see that's what the data looks like. It's generally speaking an upward sloping curve with a, a good, or upward sloping line with a lot of uh, noise involved. Uh, now what I need to do is load in the packages I'm going to use. And uh, as before, I'm going to load in the ARM package and the CODA package, which allows me to do some post-analysis on uh, Markov chains, uh, such as the one we're going to generate with our Gibbs sampler, JAGS. And I also need to load in the R JAGS library. The R JAGS library uh, is a library that um, enables us to call the JAGS system from R, just like BRUGS allows us to call WinBugs and, and OpenBugs from R. 
So uh, this is more or less the same model. Actually, this is exactly the same model I ran uh, last time, except the, the, there are subtle differences in how I need to specify some of the um, arguments here. So for example, uh, last time when I specified the data arguments for the model, I just gave it a list of n, y, and x in quotation marks. Now I need to actually say n equals n. This is the numerical argument n, which should be 50 in this case, because I've got 50 observations. Uh, I'm setting uh, the character y here equal to y, bam, which is the y data set I have. So now if I look at the data list, it's a named list of numbers. And so that's now my data argument that I, that I give JAGS. Um, I would give open bugs or win bugs just a list uh, of, of, char of, char of names. That's all it needs is the names. It can call um, the relevant arguments from, or from R's memory. Uh, the init command pretty much looks the same. I'm going to give it a list of alpha, beta, and tau y inits. Uh, I'm going to specify the names of the parameters I'd like JAGS to keep track of, just like for open bugs. I'm using the exact same example1.bug file. And let's open that up and, and actually take a look so you can see that it's exactly the same bug file I was using last week. So here's that bug file, and you can see this is... Uh, line for line, exactly the same bug file I used to run a regression uh, in WinBugs and OpenBugs. There's, there's no difference, so if you understood the lecture from last time, you'll understand this bug file. It's exactly the same. So now all I want to do is uh, create a JAGS model and update it. So uh, and for JAGS, this is a two-step process. First, I'm going to create the model with JAGS.model. I'm going to specify the bugs file that corresponds to this particular model with example1.bug, file equals example1.bug. Give it the data, the initial values, the number of chains I want to run. And this nadapt command has to do with um, a, 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 a sampling procedure that JAGS uses. Its default is 1,000, and I just leave it set at the default. Uh, so I'm going to create this JAGS model, and it everything works right. It should say no errors. It uh, compiles the model, and it's ready to rock and roll. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, burn in this model with a thousand samples. So I use the update command to uh, burn this in. I tell it I want to update the reg.jags model and the number of iterations I'd like to compute, which in this case is a thousand. So I do that and it computes almost instantaneously. Finally, I want to draw the samples I'm going to actually analyze and use. And to do that, I draw coda, use the argument or the function coda.samples. Coda.samples wants to know what model I want to run, so reg.jags, uh, what variable names it should keep track of, which I've specified up here in the parameters argument, that's right down here, and the length of the chain I'd like to draw, which in this case is going to be 5,000. So if I do this, and again, it's almost instantaneously updating, it now has 5,000 samples from the regression model. And just like before, I can run my GWIKI diagnostics. That looks pretty fine, no statistically significant z-scores there. Uh, the Heidelberg diagnostic, Heidelberg Welsh, Heidelberger, Heidelberger Welsh diagnostic, which it's passing all of them. Uh, the Raftery diagnostic, everything's working pretty much like before. Oh, this is telling me I'm going to need a bigger sample, about 13, 14,000. So I'm going to up the chain length to 15,000. Uh, pretty quick. Run the Raftery diagnostic again. Yeah, pretty good. So I'll go with that. Uh, I can do a summary of regression.sim just like I did before, and you can see it's computing based on these samples that uh, alpha is two point, about 2.5, uh, beta is 2.8, and tau y is 0.25. Um, that's pretty close to the actual values, which are 3, 2, and I think 0.25 is what yeah tau should be in this case. So we're getting pretty close to the right answer. Uh, I can use MCMC plots library just like I did last time. Uh, and it will create an MCMC plots uh, argument, or I'm sorry, uh, an MCMC plots HTML file that I can open. So uh, if I go to the current working directory, I should be able to find that. All right, here's my current working directory, and you can see the MCMC output HTML is in there. Here's my uh, chain diagnostics here. Everything looks pretty good. Autocorrelation plots look mm, pretty reasonable. Maybe could use a bit of thinning, but not really much of a problem. And my posterior densities, marginal densities, look pretty much fine. Uh, I can also uh, call this denplot command, which will allow me to plot the marginal densities for alpha, beta, and tau y 
directly in the R window, which you can see right here. Uh, Denplot also works on WinBugs objects and OpenBugs objects, if you'd like to use that. Uh, and there's also this Caterplot function, which creates uh, nice um, confidence intervals uh, for the parameters you specify. In this case, I've specified alpha and beta. And it gives confidence intervals at two different levels. I believe they're the 50 and 95% levels. Actually, let me check that. So if you go to the help file, it should tell you blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, where is it? Quantiles. Yeah, 95% and 68% credible intervals. So section out 50%, it's one standard deviation and two and whatever standard deviations. So um, there we go, 95% and 68% credible intervals for alpha and beta. And I can put it in the zero line if I'm interested in rejecting zero as a credible value, a credible belief after this regression, which is not. Uh, so everything's pretty much the same in JAGS as it is in BUGS, except for these couple of different um, commands. There are, I should say, also some syntactic differences in the way that bug file is written for certain models. There are some differences. Um, but for most of the models we'll be doing in this class, uh, the differences are not going to come up. And so it's pretty much the case that the examples that I run in WinBugs and OpenBugs will work in JAGS just fine. All right, so uh, now let's do the example with uh, unit heterogeneity, the random effects example from last week. Uh, and I'm just going to basically run the exact model I did before. I've made the changes to the appropriate um, uh, JAGS bits here, or the appropriate model initial initialization bits here, just like I did for the regression model. Um, the only difference is that because this is a somewhat more complicated model, uh, you're going to notice it's a little more, uh, it's going to take a little longer to run. And in particular, um, I'm going to uh, initialize, instead of one chain, I'm going to initialize four chains, which you can see I'm setting up four chains in my JAGS model. Uh, and then when I use the, uh, the uh, burn-in and CODA samples, I'm going to actually tell it to update all four of those chains simultaneously. So this is actually going to take a little bit longer because it's going to run four chains, but it's not going to run them at the same time. It's going to run one chain, then the next chain, then the next chain, then the next chain. So really what I'm doing is running 80,000 samples in sequence. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, load in, uh, clear out the old stuff and load in the new data. Uh, this is exactly the same data that we used uh, last week, and if you just do a head on this depth bit here, you can see there's a y and x relationship, and there's also this unit variable, which tells us uh, what unit we've observed here. We've got an n of 50 and a, uh, I'm sorry, an n of 20 and a t of 50. So we've um, observed 20 units 50 times in this data set. Um, and the, the unit heterogeneity is there, um, it, but it's a random effect. So the unit heterogeneity has mean zero and is distributed um, with a standard deviation of three around that zero mean. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, run, load my model in JAGS. I've got that all done. You can see I'm using example3.bug, just like I did in the uh, lecture four um, uh, example. Now I'm going to update a thousand iterations uh, for my chains, which I've got four of, and now I'm going to run 20,000 simulations of each chain, so a total of 80,000 simulations. Now that's a lot of simulations. You can tell it's taking my computer a little bit to crank through all of these chains. Uh, that's not actually too long. Um, this is a simple enough model that it's not reasonable. It's not unreasonable to do it that way in sequence. Um, but for really complicated models, this can end up taking a very, very, very long time. Um, so this is why eventually we're going to want to talk about using a parallel. A, we're going to parallelize this process. So instead of running these four chains one after the other, we can run all four of them or even more all at the same time. Uh, so how do my diagnostics look? Well, my uh, GWIKI diagnostics on all four of my um, chains all look pretty good. My Heidelberger Welsh up. Oh, it needs to can't course uh, more than one chain. So I've got an issue with that diagnostic. So what do I want to do there? Ah, what I want to do is remember that this is not a bugs object. So I actually don't have to have coerce it to MCMC. It's already an MCMC object. There we go. 
So it uh, looks like I'm passing all the tests for all of these. Oh, that's kind of weird. Stationarity test pat failed for one chain of the beta. So we might want to go back and run that simulation again, possibly. Oh, and again, we can't coerce because we don't need to. It's already an MCMC list. So if we run the Raftery diagnostic here, it's telling us we need chains of 13,000, which is actually perfectly reasonable. So I failed one of these tests up here, uh, these of the Heidelberger Welsh tests, but all the rest were fine. All my other tests were fine, so probably it's fine. If I do a density plot of RE-SIM, what you see is it plots each uh, each chain separately in a different color. And um, it's really reassuring to know in this case that all four of the chains are, are kind of hitting the same marginal densities. The density for alpha, for example, looks the same. Um, we can treat all four chains as one big long chain by adding collapse.t to the den plot, and then it just sort of glues the chains all together and looks at the posterior uh, marginal densities um, for each parameter separately. And you can see in this case, they each of the chains looks alike, and together they look alike as well. Uh, a catter plot here uh, shows that, oh, look at that. Beta is about 2, and alpha is uh, somewhere between 3 and 5, 5 and a half. Um, we know that, in fact, it's... Where is it here? Ah, it's three. So uh, the actually, that's interesting. The confidence interval is uh, slightly. It's actually right at the border of the ninety-five percent confidence interval. So we're actually not getting a terribly great estimate of alpha in this particular example, um, but we are getting a very accurate estimate of, of beta. Okay, so. Uh, that's all there is to using JAGS. Now, the, the, at least that's all there is for these simple examples. Uh, now, the next thing I want to show you is uh, how to use JAGS to run um, multiple Markov chains in parallel. And to do that, we're going to need to load a couple of new libraries. So let's take a look at that. So in order to do this parallel updating uh, of, of Markov chains in, in JAGS, I need two packages, uh, the dclone package and the snow package. The clone package has a special command in it that allows me to do parallel updating of JAGS models. Uh, the snow command allows me to set up a cluster of, which is to say a bunch of uh, subsidiary R programs, each one running on a different CPU on my computer uh, that I can send programs to and have them execute independently. Uh, so once these, you can load these, you know, with the usual um, install packages command if you don't already have them. I already have them installed. Uh, well, the first thing I'm going to do is load the uh, Lecuyer module into, um, this is a module of um, JAGS. And what this tells it to do is to use the uh, Lecuyer random number generator. It turns out that um, it, updating, having random numbers generated on multiple machines at multiple, at the same time, um, can be somewhat complicated because you don't want to just use the same numbers. Uh, in that case, you get the same results. And you also don't want to uh, do simple um, uh, random uh, pseudo-random number generation because um, you can get overlaps where you start to get the same numbers after a certain number of times or the numbers can be correlated with each other. All kinds of crazy things can happen. So the Lecuyer uh, random number generator is designed to handle um, a random number generation in a parallel format. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, make a cluster uh, of 10 machines, or actually it's 10 CPUs in one machine, my machine, uh, and call it CL. And uh, the make cluster command does this. This is a command in Snow. Uh, 10 uh, tells it I want 10, uh, 10 workers. And uh, type equals sock means it's going to set up a, the simplest kind of cluster, which is just a the kind of cluster that communicates with itself inside of the same PC um, using simple socket commands. Uh, this won't work if, for example, you had five PCs, all different boxes, all networked to each other over the network and you were wanting to use them as a supercomputer. Then you'd have to load in some other package um, and use a much more complicated parallelization framework in order to do that. But since I've got a PC with more than one processor in it, it's all in the same box, 
the socket type parallelization is going to work fine. Um, and most of your PCs probably have four or even eight CPUs in them, or if you have a laptop, maybe two. Um, and why not take advantage of both of them? Just set the cluster size equal to the number of CPUs you have, maybe minus one if you've got something else going on in the background. Uh, this par load module thing actually tells uh, uh, R to load the Lecuyer module in each one of the workers. So I need to tell each worker to load the Lecuyer module into, uh, into its memory in order to use the right random number generator. Uh, so the rest of this, this dat and jags and its and parameters thing is just the same stuff I loaded before. In fact, it's probably still in memory because I have the data still in memory. This is the same basic problem I had before. Uh, one thing I have to do differently is I now have to generate parallel initial values as in addition to just the regular jags initial values. All you need to do is call parallel inits, feed in the jags inits command you have, and tell it how many chains you want. And in this case, I actually don't want 12, I want 10. So I'm going to um, save those initial values in re.par inits. And then I'm going to feed re.par inits to my jags model, which is here I'm constructing my par jags model. I have to give it what cluster I'm using, uh, the name that this model is going to be called. So you notice I'm actually not um, assigning this to a name uh, with an arrow the way I usually do. I'm actually putting the name inside the par jags model command. That's a peculiarity of this command. It, it just is the way it is. Uh, here's the bugs file I'm using, example 3.bug, the data, the inits are these parallel inits that I created. Um, tell it how many chains you want to run, which is 10, and this nadapt command I keep at the default of 1,000. So if I do this right, it should feed uh, return. And incidentally, these ten, uh, this list of 10 things it's returning back is each one of the workers telling me that there were no errors in, in executing the command I just, I just executed. So I'm going to use par update instead of update to burn in 1,000 uh, simulations on each uh, model. Then I'm going to use par coda samples in order to generate the, uh, the samples I'm actually going to use. And you can see that's the same as coda samples up here, just got a par in front because there's additional overhead with doing the parallelization. And what I'm going to do is instead of running 80,000 uh, updates, 20,000 each in four chains, I'm going to do 80,000 updates, 8,000 each in 10 chains, and each one of the 10 chains is going to run in parallel. Now watch how quick this is able to do this done already. That was much, much faster than it took to run eight, and I had the same number of samples as when I did four chains, each one after the other. So, in a problem that takes a really long time that may take a day to run, if you could cut that runtime in a half or in a quarter or in an eighth by running eight processors, ten processors, twelve processors, even as few as four processors instead of one, you're going to get some real advantages in some of these in some in performance in estimating some of these models. So if you look at uh, what I've got out of this, uh, here's my the head par re dot sim, or uh, par dot re dot sim. I've got ten chains um, starting at a thousand and one because I burned in a thousand uh, samples, and I've got my four variables. And if I do a density plot on these, yeah, look at that. It looks the same. All of them pretty much look the same. I've got ten different chains. They're all pretty much overlapping. If I collapse them into one gigantic chain, yeah, looks pretty fine. Uh, nothing crazy uh, seems to be going on at least. My tau y is at 0.25, my beta is at 2, my alpha is at you know, 4, it's a little high. Um, 3 is what it's supposed to be in truth. But nothing really that different from my initial JAGS model. So that's really cool, pretty easy, and you can run uh, JAGS models in parallel without a whole lot of hassle and really get some additional speed up in your sampling time. Uh, remember, once you're done with your cluster, to use the stop cluster command to turn it off. Um, that will delete it from memory and keep you from having 20, 30, 40 uh, cluster pair, 20 or 40 zombie programs of R running in the background, eating up all your RAM and taking your precious CPU cycles. Probably mostly eating your RAM, not taking your cycles. Anyway, uh, that's it. I hope that helps for you Mac users out there especially, or for those of you interested in uh, running your chains in parallel. Uh, and with that, I'll see you later with the, uh, the regular lecture for this week.